Hi there, welcome back to Patrick's Review. This episode, One Vampires, also known as Revenant. And this is basically a birthday episode for Kim Cattrall, the actress in this. Enjoy a special day, Kim. And this was directed by Richard Elfman in the year 1998. Hi there, welcome back to Patrick's Review. Your, gu your guide to the wild world of science fiction, action, horror cinema, and me, your host, Melisipka. Tell us my name, just look at the channel name. And as I said, this is basically an episode special for Kim Cattrall. I was originally going to do this uh, film a few weeks ago, but when I found out that Kim Cattrall has a birthday on the 21st of August, I decided to do a little something special. <laughs> and so this is the film I'm reviewing. On Vampires. Now this was a telepic, and it premiered on the Brussels International Fantastic Film Festival on the 18th of March 1998. Then I have festival screenings in Germany of August 1998, in Sweden of 19 September 1998 and Portugal on 27 February 1999. It had its UK video premiere on the April 1999 and in the US on 19th October 1999. Now the DVD I'm reviewing here is of the Australian Region 4 DVD from Force Entertainment. In other regions the film has been released in the USA by Sterling Home Entertainment, which was multi-zone and had an audio yak track with director Richard Elfman and Casper Van Dien, as well as the DTS and trailers for both the film and the crazy Brian Yosner flick The Progeny. In Canada, a very similar disc with the same content was issued by Lionsgate Films. Both discs have Spanish subtitles, by the way. Also, this one only had the Region 1 code. In the UK, Anchor Bay issued the film with three soundtracks, in Dolby Digital 5.1 and DTS, in addition to the original stereo, all in English along with English subs, a photo gallery, film notes, cast and biographies, and a trailer. The Australian disc kind of loses out in terms of supplement. Anyway. And I should point out that the print on, on this disc is the unrated version, which applies to all DVD releases. The original R-rated version was only issued on VHS. The unrated version has more explicit gore. Now, a horror-themed social satire with a very dark comic edge among the vampires, is when stripped down to brass tacks, essentially a tell of how vampires in Los Angeles live during their nightlife. They go to special vampire nightclubs. Strange how in the 1990s vampire flicks, the nightclubs are really wild places to be. The one here is even wilder than the alternate history one, the Michael Oberwitz thrill of the breed. They go shopping for natty threads, socialize with their good friends, and even grab a bite to eat. Plenty of happy meals of legs walking around. Of course, due to the way this film was marketed, Many viewers were thinking this was going to be a relatively straightforward vampire flick, and some may not have gotten what they wanted the film to be. That being said, this film was a pretty hilariously nasty vampire satire, which doesn't always gel together well that well due to Matthew Bright's sharp script and Richard Elfman, yes, Danny Elfman's brother and the leader of the Oingo Boingo music band, and Bridget Fonda's brother-in-law, doing their directorial duties. His goofily eccentric sense of humor, turning the nasty humor of the story into some sort of strange beast, that only kind of series of twisted films will truly enjoy. Did I mention this was a telepic? <laughs> Seems strange what with the new team go in this. Casper Van Dien, who sent roses to every actress in the film, plays Dallas, a cocksure vampire who has returned to Los Angeles for, for a vacation despite being exiled from the sea for the past 20 years. Count Dracula, known he simply as the Count, wants nothing to do with Dallas but agrees to give the guy three days to spend in LA before he has to leave. At the same time, a piece of street trash at Dallas' side, i.e. Uh, turned into a vampire, named Nico, has been going around feeding from various men who make the mistake of picking her up as a hooker. Dallas meets up with Nico and tries to use the time that he has in the city to clean Nico up a bit. Also in the trail is Dr. Van Helsing, who along with a group of street thugs from the Crips, is determined to wipe out the vampires in the city, giving the Crips a thousand dollars for each vamp they stake. With some prize overactors in the cast, let's see, Rob St Rod Steiger, Udo Kier, and with Sex and the Sea legend Kim Cattrall, happy birthday Kim, here playing one real classy vamp, One Vampires is pretty much a twisted life right for fans of these the sort of vampire films that take the genre into the realm of the demented. It's not perfect, as the script needed a much more serious type of dark comedy, as goofy sat satire Elfman uses here just doesn't suit the material that well. Still, for what it is, it's, it's a nice diversion for vampire fans, and the copy is blood, bare skin and acid tongue one-liners gives people with sufficiently dark sense of humor, like me, uh, enough perverse enjoyment for their dollar. The acting can be seen as somewhat over the top by some people with more refined tastes, but for those with a love for such over the top acting, 
well, well, they'll see the performances here just about right. That being said, Dracula Purus might want to avoid seeing this one's the film features. What can be fairly described as the worst ever depictions of Count Dracula and Dr. Van Helsing you'll ever find in the 1990s genre cinema. And this is a movie made for television. Not that much, but it was pretty damn funny. <laughs> now for gore. Plenty of blood here. I should point out that the film was broadcast in an R-rated version. American R, that is. Here in Australia, it was rated MA15+, plus, which is what you see on the DVD. And the... And, out, and the unrated version has extra gore, which, while not that substantial, still pretty much delivers to the gorehound's pleasure. Little Kia loses his head, by the way. As for nudity, boobs, butt, and bush from various women, both human and vampire. Kim Control gets a wolf packed by the crypts while tied to a bed, her vampire makeup running the span of a naked body, boobs in a partial crotch shot. Not that I appreciate sexual assault, but this thing's meant to be a joke, and thankfully it comes across, across as such, dark human all. One Vampires earns a C plus, 5 out of 10 from me. It isn't quite what the genre needs in a serious context, but for a pleasant diversion, this will provide a few chuckles. Recommended for those who have dark sense of humor, like me. As for the DVD, I already gave info on the foreign discs of this film, or the review disc here, I'll show it again, is from the Australian DVD label Force Entertainment. Originally Force Video, but it was changed to Force Entertainment after being acquired by Beyond Home Entertainment which turned the force from a semi-legit label with a NASA reputation during the early years of the DVD age to a reasonably respectable one before falling it into itself. The picture is in 133, so that will annoy widescreen junkies, but please purists, it was made as a telepic which makes a 133 frame accurate, and quality speaking is generally good. The English series is also good as well, although a little lower on the volume level. That being said, the British DVD has a 5.1 and a DTS. There are no subtitles, which is common across the force catalog, and the supplement is only limited to a trailer, so this disc pretty much loses out in the uh, extras department. The other release has some more substantial supplements, everything from a commentary track on the American Canadian discs, film trivia, and photo gallerines and stuff like that. So, one vampires gets a C plus, five out of ten, it's passable. And King Control, I hope you enjoy your birthday. <laughs> okay, that's it for the this episode of the Patrick's review. I don't I do not do requests, but if you have a if you want to me to check out certain films, just hit me up in the comments section, I'll see if I have in my collection. Also, if, if you have any questions about DVDs, just hit me up and I'll answer. Okay, I hope you guys are staying safe. Lockdown's been extended for a third month. Ugh. Sucks. Hmm. Yeah, but at least I'm, I'm doing well. I hope you guys are doing well as well. Okay, see you guys. Take it easy.